It's all fun and games until someone loses an eye. No group knows this saying better than the children of the 80s. A decade known for the Rubik's Cube, Transformers, and everyone at Pac-Man Fever. For this list, All Things Top 5 looks at the most dangerous kids' toys from the 80s that resulted in injury or death. It's a miracle any child from that decade survived into adulthood. Well, we'd like to show you another one of Mr. Mainway's products. It retails for $1.98, and it's called Bag of Glass. <laughs> Number 5. Clackers. Also known as knockers or click clacks, this device is basically an aboriginal weapon converted into a child's toy. This toy consisted of two heavy acrylic gonads attached to a weighty string and had only one purpose to be knocked together as quickly and as fast as possible. This resulted in a loud clacking noise that gave the toy its name. Hey, Bilo, look! I can turn my butt into clacker balls! <laughs> it's funny and sad. <sighs> If swung too hard, the acrylic testes would shatter, sending broken ball bits into the air and getting lodged into the face or eyes. Clackers were officially banned in 1985. Everybody has a preference. Some guys like them round and Some guys like them thin, some guys like them uh, tacky, some guys like them brand new, some guys like old balls. I mean, they're all different. In 2017, the toy was revived in Egypt and were popular among school children. It became famous under the name Sisi's Balls, referring to the testicles of the Egyptian president, Abdel Fattah al-Sisi. Police seized 41 clacker sellers and confiscated 1,403 of these toys, which they considered offensive to the government. Yo, Dre, what up? I got something to say. We're not quite sure why anyone would find two balls slamming together entertaining. Never mind, we get it now. Number 4. Easy Bake Oven Easy Bake Ovens have always been a popular toy, even earning a spot in the National Toy Hall of Fame. It's been around since the 1960s, but reached its height during the totally tubular 80s. This toy was basically a miniature appliance with a light bulb inside that gets up to 350 degrees Fahrenheit to serve up partially cooked batter. I used to love to play restaurant. Eh, not as much as you love to play uncooked batter eater. <laughs> It is unreasonable to expect a child to wait for a light bulb to cook brownies. <laughs> After four decades of burning children's hands, It wasn't until 2007 that Hasbro was forced to recall over 1 million of their plastic models after a design flaw allowed the oven to trap and severely burn children's fingers. One girl even had to undergo a partial amputation of her finger. The company has since released a newer version with an electric heating element instead of a light bulb. No more light bulbs? No more light bulbs. No more light bulbs? No more light bulbs. No more light bulbs. No! More light bulbs. no! <laughs> and just like mommy's oven, because it runs on clean burning gas. Because that's supposed to be safer. Number 3. Lawn darts. It doesn't take much imagination to see why steel missiles with weighted skewers that could easily impale someone was a bad idea. Although the backyard game cheerful packaging showed the whole family happily playing, it would have been more accurate to show little Timmy with a bandage wrapped around his bleeding skull. Just a flesh wound. Kids would throw them up in the air and see who would stand there the longest before it came back down. The kid who stood there the longest was considered the winner, depending on the outcome, of course. Turns out the force of a lawn dart has an estimated 23,000 pounds of pressure per inch, more than enough force to pierce a skull like a melon. These lawn weapons of mass destruction were responsible for sending over 6,000 kids to the hospital for injuries, three deaths, and one 11-year-old girl was put into a coma. The Consumer Product Safety Commission banned lawn darts for good in 1988 and urged consumers to destroy any remaining games. It is still completely legal to buy and sell replacement parts. Number 2. Slip-In Slides With over 9 million units sold, this product came to a screeching halt not from young children hurting themselves, but from teenagers and adults. Diving headfirst onto a thin piece of yellow plastic on a hard surface, what could go wrong? Slip-In Slides were the official summertime toy of the 80s for those who couldn't afford a pool. Lois, can I go slip and slide in the yard? Has it been half an hour since you've eaten? Yes, almost. Okay, I just want to be sure you don't get a cramp. Yay! Poor people, what a fun! Injuries occurred because people heavier or taller than children might stop suddenly when diving onto the toy or fly off the plastic runway at warp speed. Warp one, engage! The death peddlers at Whammo continued to sell the slip and slide throughout the 80s. Even if kids broke their toes on one of the stakes that secured the mat to the ground or punctured their rear on a rock hiding under the mat. And what happened when you didn't put enough water on the slip and slide? The hot, dry plastic will rip your flesh off your bones like you just slid across a cheese grater. Oh, I 
your hot button to walk her out! Who's that? The CPSC has periodically reminded overgrown man children to steer clear of backyard water slides. All right, party time. I brought the slip and slide. Let's move the couch. Okay, I'll get the hose. No, no, we don't need the hose, man. We'll just use beer. Also, are you nuts? You're right. We don't want to waste the beer. Go get the hose, man. Before we get to number one, remember to subscribe to All Things Top 5 and ring the bell to be notified for our latest videos. Number one. Entertech Water Guns This is a brand of battery-powered motorized water guns by the now-defunct LJN company. Unlike the clear water guns of the day, Entertech Water Guns were manufactured from black plastic with a matte finish to resemble actual firearms. These guns were revolutionary at the time when most children were purchasing cheap plastic squirt guns that were hand-powered, had poor shooting range, and looked like toys. Entertech boasted realistic looks and water storage in the form of detachable magazines. Ah oh, man, I mean, most of these guns are discontinued anyway. Like this Uzi water pistol is from a Flash Battalion combat set. They got rid of it because it looked too real. Yo! The end of Entertech's short-lived success was due to incidents in which law enforcement officers shot and killed children toting the toy guns, claiming to have mistaken them for actual firearms. In addition, there were reported incidents of criminals utilizing these toy guns in robberies of retail establishments and even banks. Am I rocking or what? Entertech voluntarily began manufacturing their guns with neon colors and a blaze orange cap on the tip of their guns. There's no way! Just the tips? What were we thinking? By this time, sales were declining and kids didn't want to buy toys that looked like neon vomit that the 80s became known for. No generation is bigger on nostalgia than those kids who grew up in the 90s. Quite possibly the last generation to remember a world before technology and had toys that could inflict massive bodily harm. A decade known for the Pokemon, Kirby's, Beanie Babies, and dying of dysentery on the Oregon Trail. For this list, All Things Top 5 looks at the most dangerous toys from the 1990s that resulted in injury or death. It's no wonder why so many children of the 90s were so angry all the time. Number 5. Snack Time Cabbage Patch Kids In 1996, Mattel released a Snack Time Cabbage Patch Kids for the holiday season. It was a special doll that would eat snacks inserted into the doll's mouth thanks to a series of motorized metal rollers. I don't really get the whole, like, legend of the Cabbage Patch. It freaks me out. What babies harvested from the heads of cabbage? While the doll's soft, fleshy lips were already disturbing on their own, the bigger issue is that the Snack Time Cabbage Patch Kids had some cannibalistic tendencies. The doll couldn't differentiate between the plastic snacks it was supposed to eat and an actual child's finger or hair. The Snack Time Cabbage Patch Kids mechanism was a one-way battery-powered roller with no off switch. It was supposed to be activated by the accompanying snacks, but this spawn of Chucky made no distinction between food and fingers once it developed a taste for human flesh. There were unconfirmed complaints of the doll's eyes glowing red, the room temperature dropping, and the smell of sulfur in the air. Every time you eat a cabbage, you're also eating the infant that grows inside. <laughs> Yummy. Ultimately, Mattel bit the bullet and offered a $40 refund to the 500,000 potential victims of the feeding frenzy. The dolls were eventually pulled from the shelves after the 1997 Christmas season. Now they're worth a lot of cabbage. I can sell these to little stupid kids for about $50 each. $50 each. Can you believe that? Number four, Skydancer Dolls. It was easy to understand the popularity of sky dancers. They were fairy-like figures with soft foam wings. Wow, they really fly! When they were attached to a handle base and a ripcord was pulled, the fairies would shoot into the air and gently twirl back to the ground. The reality is when the cord was pulled, the sky dancer would rocket randomly from the base at great velocity, and while they may have twirled to the ground, they didn't float gently. They fell from the sky and bitch-slapped children like a white trash Tinkerbell on a meth high. This resulted in temporary blindness, scratch corneas, broken teeth, facial lacerations that require stitches, and even a mild concussion. These toys were recalled after just six years on the market following reports of over 150 injuries. That's about 9 million Sky Dancers recalled. Ha! Number 3. Silly Strings Silly Strings were the go-to party favor at children's birthdays across the country. 
like confetti, but for terrible people. Its primary purpose is to instantly reveal who the most obnoxious person at the party is. Sold in canisters that look like spray paint, kids could run around shooting out the wet, sticky strands of colored goo. The material used to make the string and propellant was extremely flammable and created a serious risk of burn injuries when sprayed near an open flame. <laughs> open flames like those found on a birthday cake. The CPSC was aware of reports of burns resulting from use of these aerosol blow torches. Many children suffered serious burns during their birthday party that left permanent scars. Hey Homer! You're missing out on some fun! Number 2. Rollerblade Barbie Nothing screamed the 1990s more than a pair of rollerblades. In 1991, Mattel launched the production of Rollerblade Barbie. This doll had a cigarette lighter-like device in her skates that would legitimately shoot out sparks when rolled on a flat surface. A cool rollerblade! Unfortunately, this spark was not any sort of light-up device, but rather actual flint sparks, similar to the inside of your standard Bic lighter. This is the first time in history a Bic lighter gave children an unrealistic body image, as well as third-degree burns. Roll over anything flammable, and you've got a major problem. So when Barbie wanted to rollerblade in one of her long princess dresses, bad things happened. In 1994, Dave Barry demonstrated how dangerous Rollerblade Barbie was by igniting a pair of tidy whities on The Late Show with David Letterman. Although the Rollerblade Barbie was never officially banned or recalled, Mattel did quickly stop production. For more great videos, remember to subscribe to All Things Top 5 and ring the bell to be notified for our latest videos. Number 1. Mini Hammocks Usually when a person thinks of a hammock, they imagine a swinging bed between two palm trees and not some sort of death cocoon disguised as a child's toy. <laughs> you know that scene in the movies when an unsuspecting individual steps on a patch of loose dirt and leaves, only to be hoisted into the air by what turned out to be a trap? It's a trap! In the 1990s, toy manufacturers such as Easy Sales thought it'd be a good idea to market mini versions of these for children, unfortunately named the Hang Tan model. The hammock did not feature spreader bars to keep them open, resulting in a twisted mess that risked strangulation every time a kid tried to get in or out. This design flaw made escape difficult, if not impossible. Ten different manufacturers eventually had to recall over 3 million mini hammocks after at least 12 children died of asphyxiation after being tangled in the contraption. Hey! What are you doing? I'm stuck. The first generation have reliable high-speed internet and a cell phone in every pocket. With such technological marvels, you would think this generation of children wouldn't have time for toys, much less toys that had the potential to kill them. A decade known for the Razor Scooter, Rats Dolls, Heelys, and children across the country neglected their real dogs for robotic ones. It's so cool! Yeah, it's much cooler than your stupid human dog. For this list, All Things Top 5 looks at the most dangerous toys from the 2000s that resulted in injury or death. It's a miracle Toys R Us lasted as long as it did. All those shops gone. The Gap, Starbucks, Toys R Us. Who will remember all those landmarks unless we tell the world of them? Number 5. Magnetics. Magnetics! Oh, no, let's see what you can do. Magnetics! The totally new extenders, flexors, curves, connectors, and lights. The magic of magnetics is the power of magnetics. Let's see what you can do with magnetics. Magnetics became a parent's nightmare in 2007 after many children suffered serious injuries after swallowing the magnets that had fallen out of the plastic pieces. Magnetics building sets feature plastic pieces that could break open, spilling small yet powerful balls. That's what he said, right, guys, because of gay? That were easily swallowed by curious toddlers. Unlike most small objects swallowed in this manner, the magnets didn't pass through the digestive system. Instead, they connected with each other through tissue walls, sometimes forming large masses that twist intestines and cut off blood supply to vital organs requiring surgery. The result can be a painful death within hours. <laughs> Magnetics manufacturer, Megablox, released a statement saying it had no record or knowledge of a similar occurrence involving this toy. In 2005, 22-month-old Kenny died after nine tiny magnets reattached inside his bowels. Three million magnetic sets sat on store shelves for four months after Kenny's death. When they were finally recalled, at least 34 more children were known to have been injured. Oh my god, they killed Kenny! You bastards! Number four, Polly Pockets. Quick click, house of style. For quick click, fashion. 
flash and it's totally wild. Elevator down. Hey, a new outfit. Change the color. A great click trick. 90s kids will remember the original Polly Pocket Compacts, but it was a later version that actually caused a major safety alert. A few years after launching its quick click line in 2004, Mattel recalled 7.3 million playsets due to, you guessed it, faulty magnets. Yeah, bitch! Magnets! Oh! Of all the toys in the world that could harm your child, you think Polly Pocket would be on the very bottom of the list. They're cute and harmless, and besides, it's just a bunch of dolls and a playhouse. What could possibly go wrong? It's almost as if Mattel intentionally designed a dollhouse for little kids where each piece is scientifically engineered to fit inside a child's throat. Young children being young children would eat the magnets or stick them in noses and ears, which is bad enough on its own. The CPSC mentioned around 170 cases of rogue magnets, which resulted in three cases of hospitalization for children. You lie! You promised it wouldn't hurt! It hurts! Number 3. CSI Fingerprint Examination Kit In 2007, a science kit based on the hit TV show that kids probably shouldn't be watching proved to be more dangerous than the stories told in the murder porn crime drama. Kids got to live out their CSI fantasy of dusting fingerprints and collecting bodily fluids off a dead prostitute's body. I've never seen so many dead hookers in all my life! As stated, the kit allowed children to dust for fingerprints. The problem is that the powder used to dust for said fingerprints was chock full of asbestos. The Environmental Working Group reported that the powder contained up to 7% of tremolite, one of the most dangerous forms of asbestos, and more than enough to cause cancer later in life. Is it dangerous? Legally, I have to say yes, but personally, I don't think it's a problem. How could asbestos hurt you? It's got best right in it. Rather than wait for the CPSC to negotiate a recall, the Asbestos Disease Awareness Organization filed a civil action to stop sales of the kit. It took 20 months for CBS to agree to a settlement in the class action lawsuit and finally issue a recall of the toy. Court is adjourned. Pay to the order of Mrs. Wilbur Stark. One dollar and nine cents! It was never made clear why asbestos was included in the fingerprint powder, which could easily be inhaled, but many customers blame China since the game was manufactured there. A state inspector found 1.74 parts per million of asbestos! That's not enough! We demand more asbestos! More asbestos! More asbestos! More asbestos! More asbestos! More asbestos! Number 2. Hannah Montana Pop Star Card Game before Miley Cyrus was poisoning the youth of America with her twerking, she was poisoning them with her Hannah Montana pop star card game, which contained lead at 75 times the legal level. And Hannah Montana can go back to naked straddling the three-ton wrecking ball. She was clearly upsold at Home Depot. Second only to arsenic, lead is one of the deadliest household toxins in existence. The American Academy of Pediatrics recommends that no toy contains more than 40 parts per million lead. Which is why it was so alarming when lab tests revealed the Hannah Montana Pop Star card game contained lead at 75 times that level, a whopping 3,000 parts per million. Hannah Montana wasn't the only wrecking ball in 2007. One study found that 35% of all toys on the shelves contained high levels of lead, and nearly 5% contained arsenic or cadmium. By year's end, there had been 42 recalls involving 6 million toys for excessive lead levels. But Hannah Montana stayed on the shelves because the lead was found in his vinyl, not in the paint, and thus was not covered by the regulation. I thank the man upstairs that we live in a country where the corporations can reap the profits from a death machine and, through the use of loopholes and disclaimers, not be liable when the lawsuits start flooding in. Before we get to number one, remember to subscribe to All Things Top 5 and ring the bell to be notified for our latest videos. Number one, Aqua Dots. For fun that stays, Aqua Dots! The magical dots you create spray and play. Arrange small beads, spritz them with water, and your design will fuse together. Sounds like fun, right? The problem with this 2007 toy was that the coating released a compound GHB, which stands for gamma hydroxybutyrate, also known as the date rape drug, Rohypnol, Rufies, Mickey, and the Bill Cosby. What's this? This is your, your date drug? Your Rufie? It's a Mentos. They're the fresh maker. Aquadoss Design Studio, sold in Australia's Bindi's, allows children to create 3D creations using small beads that become adhesive when wet. Once dried, kids are left with their own fixed creations. Two children in the US and three in Australia were hospitalized after swallowing several beads. 
the affected children became dizzy, vomited, and eventually slipped into a comatose state for as many as five days. The toys makers blamed Chinese subcontractors before eventually agreeing to recall all 4.2 million Aquadots kits. Just two years later, Aquadots hit the market again under the name Pixos in the US and Beatos in Australia in a transparent attempt to disassociate the old toys from the new ones. The products were marketed as safely tested and manufactured using only approved ingredients. However, the background music in the television commercial remained exactly the same. The magical dots you create, spray, and play. And get ready for the all-new Aquadot Super Stupid. Pixos! Colorful Pixos that you can spray and they stay. Just pick a pattern, pop them on the tray. We can only assume that Aquadots are now selling for hundreds of dollars on eBay to frat houses across the country. Do you agree or disagree with our list? Comment below and watch our other videos and subscribe to All Things Top 5.